Hello, my friends, family, and esteemed colleagues, and my barking dog. Uh, this video is devoted to digestion. Basically, the most frequently asked question is going around what about the digestive enzymes, what about probiotics, what about fermented vegetables? <clears throat> well, this is, if you, if you follow my work, if you read my book or read several articles where I talk about food and digestion, you will know right away that uh, there is a simple answer to all these questions. Well, do digestive enzymes help our health? Um, yes and no. Because if you're eating correctly, yes, digestive enzyme can ease your digest digestive um, problems. Because, yeah, you are going to create gas, you'll have pain in the stomach, maybe inflammation. So digestive enzymes will break down the garbage that your body cannot digest. But now why your body cannot digest it? Because you eat the wrong stuff. Probiotics. Well, this is a all new game. Okay, this is so much baloney talk uh, is around it. Scientific baloney, okay, because we are being told that this uh, microflora that we have in our intestines, this is uh, this miracle of uh, cellular structure that even overpowers our own cellular structure because it's more plentiful and uh, it helps us to think clearly. It uh, um, keeps our, it's our true immune system. It's um, uh, so I don't know, just, just the garbage, I just cannot cipher through it. It's all baloney science. Because this flora and fauna in the intestines is always ch shifting and changing with the diet, depending what you eat. This is how, what kind type of flora you're going to have. But now we have uh, probiotics. Okay, these, these are exactly the, 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 the examples of a flora, macroflora that you have to have in your stomach. This is not true. It's pure lie. And uh, people who uh, are new to this uh, ketogenic, or I don't even want to call it ketogenic because then you look at ketogenic and ketosis and what people write about it and it's many mistakes are there. So let's call it the natural human diet or natural omnivore diet. So uh, since it's based on animal products, uh, basically meat, eggs and dairies. So we are the impression that you have to have correct microflora. So if we are eating this way, we are not going to have the correct microflora. So can we fix it, let's say, by, by eating, if we cannot already process raw vegetable and we should not eat cooked vegetable. So shall we um, benefit from eating fermented vegetables, fermented food? Well, this is what herbivores eat fermented greens but and they survive on it but what happens they have separate fermentation bag which we don't have but not all animals that basically live on fermented uh, greenery of the vegetable uh, have a rumen they may have just enlarged stomach where the food lingers. But 
like horse, for example, uh, or gorilla. But what happens? Either one of those species can eat and survive on meat perfectly. But what can they cannot survive is on cooked, uh, well, not survive, what doesn't agree with their diet is grain, carbohydrate, blows them up. And um, now, how much of this fermented stuff they need to do? Well, just look at horses. Horses that graze a lot, they have a huge stomachs. Look at the Arabian horse, slim stomach. Why? Because it is not being fed so much with vegetables, doesn't have to ferment so much, because it's giving animal protein and animal fats in a food. And um, Gorilla? Gorilla basically has sedentary life. They are not doing nothing but sitting down and chewing on leaves. But they also, when they have chance, they will also go and eat termites and worms. Occasionally, animal. And we are being told, oh, you, you, you watch the teeth, you know, humans have these teeth. They should be grinding, they should be eating vegetables. Well, look at gorilla, look at those canines, should be eating nothing but meat. And it doesn't. Now, do we need vegetable? We said the digestive fiber. Digestive fiber does not exist because plants fiber that they have is cellulose. You cannot digest it. And the fiber that you have in animals, it's a collagen. So tendon, yeah, it will dissolve. It dissolves sometimes slower than uh, flesh. So it can be used to transport things through your intestines. But do we benefit from fermented vegetables? No, why would we? Because yes, the, if we eat fermented vegetables, our flora will change. Is it beneficial? Well, yeah, it's beneficial because for this type of a diet, you will need that type of flora. And having digestive enzymes with it or having probiotics means absolutely deadly squat. The flora, microorganisms, replicate quickly. And genetic adaptations are rapid. So with, within two generations, bingo, it's completely different micro, microbiome. And two generations in microorganism could mean half hour. So things are completely different that we understand them to be. Especially when we keep clinging to the old science. Forget about it. Just, just skip it. Forget about supplements. The supplement industry has to go. Same like the pharmaceutical industry. They are not any better. It's the same crap. They are selling you bogus stuff. So everything you need is in your proper diet. The proper food is what I call the God's food, is what you can, what will nourish you when eaten raw. And the only thing that your body can process and can be nourished with in a raw state are animal-based products because the cells and everything about them is based on animal fats and animal proteins, which are exactly what we are made out of. 
As soon as you switch to a to, to uh, vegetable or fruits, you cannot digest them. You cook them, they are changing frequency and everything that goes with it. Adding uh, fermented food to your diet, to your, let's say, natural diet, yeah, well, you can do it. But you have to understand that basically you are going to be running your digestion more and what you are going to be bringing in is barely enough for the increased time of digesting. Because there is, if you want to have any kind of a, a calorie from, let's say, sauerkraut, well, you gotta stuff the stomach and keep it stuffed with sauerkraut all day. So then this little amount of fat and fatty bacteria that your body can now use will give you some energy. And you cannot move much because you are not making enough energy. You are just covering your digest digestive loss. So don't be obsessed with this stuff, with this kind of food. The longer your digestion runs, the more energy you are losing. So why not to run the digestion as short period of time as possible, gain as much calories as possible in this time, and then have your digestive system idle. Because when Digestion is using energy. It's the same electricity. That much less electricity you have for your muscles to work and you have less for your brain to think, you are depleting yourself. So try to keep your digestion running as little as possible. Again, now here is 10 o'clock, 10.30. And what happens? I just had my plasma in the morning. I will have more plasma. And again, I'm not going to be putting in my mouth anything but plasma until probably two or three o'clock or four o'clock in the afternoon. And this is when I'm going to have my meal that is packed with animal protein and fats. And after the meal, if I don't make mistake, and have fruit, I will be fine. I don't have to eat anymore. If I get enticed with some nice fruit, then I'm done. Because then I'm going to be munching on this fruit until I go to bed at night. Because sweet is addictive. And sweet wants more sweet and more sweet and more sweet. Often I'm asked, oh, can my baby you know, it's starting to eat, but can I put some dry fruits? Well, why would you want to program your, your baby loving sugar? Because then you have problem. Then the baby is always going to go after sugar. Babies who are not trained for sugar, they don't even like it when they are growing up. They much prefer salt. So don't train your baby to stuff that it should not be eating. And uh, as far as the probiotics goes and digestive uh, enzymes, you don't need them. Just eat correctly and your body takes care of it. Plus, raw meat comes with its own digestive enzymes. It self-digests. It's the easiest digestion ever completely contrary to what from what we are being told just don't cook it do not coagulate it because then nothing can digest it except bacteria and then we say oh we have the wrong bacteria look it produces a smelly farts and of course you are putrefying meat your, your meat is the meat you are eating is rotting in your intestines producing toxins 
we just have to eat correctly. And when this is happening, putting, <coughs> putting digestive enzymes, yeah, but what enzymes? They are all based on carbohydrate. All these probiotics based on eating cooked vegetables. It's all wrong stuff. And because of it, as soon as you eat it, it starts transforming itself because it cannot do, it cannot survive like that in this environment that you create from the food you eat. So things are completely different from what we are being told. And you have million experts on the internet repeating like parrots the same story and you know, repetition is the way of programming. Then people go and say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, well, well, everybody knows that garlic is great. Everybody knows that fermented vegetables are healthy. Everybody knows, everybody knows. What everybody knows is what shit. Thank you for being here. I hope this makes sense to you. Till next time, I love you all.